Welcome to Grading to Save Time, a project by the Writing Across the Curriculum Fellows at Bronx Community College. We know that all faculty members would like to grade their students' writing more effectively and efficiently, so in this short video we will provide you with suggestions on how to do that. The first thing to consider when trying to save time on grading is that you can and should assign non-graded assignments to your students. Short and informal ungraded assignments can be very productive for students while not creating any extra work for you. For example, short reading reflections and in-class free writing exercises can increase student engagement with class content, yet does not require written feedback. You can either use a system of check plus, check, and check minus to let students know how they are doing, or you can skip grading these assignments altogether. If you want to incorporate some feedback into these short assignments, you can leave some time in class for peer assessments. Students can work together and exchange their work, making comments on each other's writing. Often, you might ask them to comment on one aspect of the short assignment that their peer has done well, and one aspect of the assignment that they could improve on. For assignments that do require some grading, make sure you don't take on more work than you need to. Close line editing of students' work is time-consuming and largely inefficient. Studies have shown that most grammar and spelling errors can be identified by students themselves. The example on this slide shows a kind of minimal marking, in which you'd simply place an X in the margin of sentences that contain errors, so that you don't have to painstakingly correct those errors yourself. Another way to cut down on grading time is to make sure that any graded assignments you set are explicitly focusing on one or two particular learning outcomes for students. This should result in better student papers, which are therefore easier to mark, and also saves you time in giving them feedback. Commenting only on these mistakes, and not on others such as grammatical mistakes, also means that students are more likely to take your targeted feedback on board, as they will not feel overwhelmed. In between setting an assignment and its deadline, you should try and incorporate in-class activities that specifically target the skills needed to succeed in the assignment. This shows the students how to approach the assignment, thus streamlining the grading process. Grading rubrics are another helpful tool to save you time. A rubric will explicitly lay out your grading criteria based around the learning outcomes the assignment in question is targeting. You can then leave space in the rubric to indicate the extent to which the student has met these criteria. The example on this slide involves a very simple scale involving checks and crosses. You might also want to include a list of common errors and their fixes at the bottom of the rubric, so you can check or star the ones the students need to work on instead of writing the same comments out again and again. Professors at BCC can get a copy of a departmental rubric from the assessment coordinator. We know that this year most instructors are teaching online. This can make it more challenging to keep track of student work and provide effective and timely feedback. We are going to briefly walk you through three common online platforms that might help you with grading. You may already be familiar with the Track Changes function in Microsoft Word. This can be a useful tool to give feedback on longer written assignments. Just turn on Track Changes under the Review menu in the Microsoft Word platform. It will track any edits you make to spelling or grammar, and it allows you to leave longer comments on student work. Track changed Word files can be saved and uploaded to Blackboard to share this feedback. Many of your students likely already use a Gmail account, which allows them to use Google Docs. This has similar features to Microsoft Word that allows you to provide feedback directly on a document that your students share with you through email. On the right side of the Google Doc, beneath the Share button, click the pen to enter the marking mode. 
while in suggesting mode, changes you make to the document create suggestions colored green throughout the document, which the student can then accept or reject. This can be used to help students recognize common grammar and spelling errors. You can also use suggesting mode to leave more substantive feedback. Highlight a section of text, click the comment box next to the share button, and write your comment. Like with the suggesting feature, students can accept the comment after they have addressed the issue in their next draft. Turnitin Feedback Studio provides commonly used writing feedback that can be applied directly to students' writing in digital format. In this example, we can highlight student phrasing and mark it as vague, which creates suggestions for the student to be more specific and direct in their writing. A more simple grammatical error, like a comma splice, can also be identified with the simple click that provides students with a definition of comma splice and how to fix it. We hope these suggestions are helpful for you in addressing more efficient and effective grading of student writing. If you have any other ideas of how we can support you and your students' writing, please reach out to us at the website cuny.is slash bccwac. You can also explore our website for more resources on writing across the curriculum at Bronx Community College.